Bernardo de Galvez by Jamie Maldonado, illustrated by Tom McNeely. Page 3. In 1775, when the American colonies fought for independence from Great Britain, the colonists faced an enormous challenge. Great Britain was then the most powerful nation in the world. With its army and navy, British power reached around the globe. It was this power that made the colonists proud to be part of the British Empire. But when the British government passed unfair tax laws on the colonies to pay for Britain's war debts, colonists began voicing their disapproval. When British troops were sent to Massachusetts to seize ammunition and gunpowder, war broke out. Page 4. When the war began, the British military had the colonies surrounded. Britain's famous navy controlled all seafaring traffic along the Atlantic seaboard east of the colonies. Britain also controlled much of the land in North America. Thanks to a treaty signed after the French and Indian War, in these territories, which lined the colonies on three fronts, British forts and outposts dotted the landscape. Even to the north, much of Canada was British territory. Britain also held much of the land west of the Appalachian Mountains. And to the south, Britain controlled an area called West Florida, site of present-day Alabama and Mississippi. Further increasing their influence, the British brought, bought the loyalty of many Indian tribes through gifts and flattery. Completely encircled, the colonies faced a grave danger. The British had the power to shut off trade and communication with the rest of the world. If this occurred, the Americans might be forced to make peace on Britain's terms. Isolating the colonies during wartime could have produced a very different outcome. The United States of America might never have survived. Page 5. However, one gap remained in Britain's circle of power. It was New Orleans, gateway to the Mississippi River. New Orleans and all of Louisiana were held by another colonial power, the Spanish. Spain had acquired this territory in 1762 from France. The French were glad to be rid of it. They regarded most of the area as useless swamp land. But Spain valued the land. For Spain, this territory acted as a buffer between New Spain, the Spanish colony centered in Mexico, and British-held West Florida. Though Britain was a world power, it was not without powerful enemies. In 1761, the kings of France and Spain pledged mutual support against either one's enemies. In 1763, these two countries were defeated in a war with Great Britain. As a result, Spain and France looked favorably upon the rebellious American patriots. Seeking revenge against Great Britain, they began helping the Americans. The Spanish had little love for Great Britain. Spain had fought the British off and on for hundreds of years. After the discovery of North America, the two nations competed to build empires there. With Great Britain riding high in the 1770s, Spain was looking for an opportunity to wound its British foe. Aiding the American independence movement gave them just such an opening. By the end of 1775, the Spanish were providing gunpowder and military supplies to the colonists. Page 6. On January 1st, 1777, Bernardo de Galvez arrived in New Orleans as the new governor of Louisiana. It was a bright day for Louisiana and for the American cause. Galvez was a promising young leader. In Spain, his wealthy family had close ties to King Carlos III. In New Spain, Bernardo's father ranked as the highest Spanish official. Before he came to New Orleans, Galvez served a brilliant career in the military. He was only 15 years old when he joined Spain's army in 1762. The following year, he led men into battle in a war against Portugal. 
Galvez fought so well that he was promoted to captain. Six years later, he made his way to Mexico, known back then as New Spain. Page 7. Here, Galvez continued his military success. He defended Spanish settlers against Apache attacks. He survived seven arrows and knife wounds in these battles, but always returned to fight as quickly as he could. His military career also brought Galvez to North Africa, where he was wounded again, this time even more seriously. When Galvez recovered, King Carlos III appointed him governor of the Spanish colony in Louisiana. Only 30 years old, Galvez would become a key player in the capital city of New Orleans and a vital ally to American patriots. When Galvez arrived in Louisiana, the Creoles, descendants of the colony's original French settlers, were suspicious. Spain had only recently taken control of the colony. The population hadn't yet made peace with their new leaders, and they distrusted the aristocratic Spanish rulers. The people of Louisiana quickly found that their worries were groundless. Galvez embraced the community of New Orleans and made many friends. He even fell in love with a local Creole woman and made her his bride. This marriage sealed his popularity with longtime Louisiana colonists. Most importantly, Galvez devoted himself to the work of governing. He encouraged farmers to settle in the colony and strengthened the army to provide security for them. And he managed the day-to-day -day problems of the city, from dirty streets to hurricane damage. Page 9. When Galvez first arrived in Louisiana, the American colonies had been at war with Great Britain for two years. With encouragement from Spain, Galvez did all he could to help America's revolutionary cause. One way to help, he realized, was to use New Orleans' strategic location on the Mississippi River. So in April 1777, he issued a proclamation opening the port city to trade with the United States. Galvez knew that the American fighters needed supplies badly, so he used the Mississippi and other rivers as highways to sneak weapons, ammunition, and medicine to the Patriots. These supplies were packed into boats and sent upriver. Because the boats flew the Spanish flag, they cruised past British forts on the Mississippi without being stopped and boarded. At first, Galvez had to move these supplies in secret, since Spain and Great Britain were not at war with each other. Galvez's boats may have turned one patriot near defeat into victory. When he sent gunpowder to Fort Pitt in western Pennsylvania, it arrived at just the right moment to help patriot troops thwart a British attack. The cargo sent from New Orleans also helped the Americans win the Battle of Saratoga in 1777. That battle represented a turning point in the Revolutionary War. This victory convinced France that Americans could win the war. As a result, France declared war against Great Britain in 1778. Spain followed suit by declaring war on Britain in 1779. Page 10. Finally, Spain was officially at war with Great Britain. This meant that Galvez could confront the British directly. And by taking on the British in Florida, Galvez could help the Americans. The timing couldn't have been better. The first years of the war had not gone well for the Patriots, and they needed all the assistance they could get. Galvez knew it would be weeks before the British in West Florida learned of Spain's entry into the war. Using this advantage, he rushed to prepare a surprise attack on British forts across the Mississippi River from Louisiana. So Galvez combed the colony of Louisiana, looking for recruits to join the fight. By late August of 1779, Galvez had gathered a small army of Spanish soldiers, Indians, Creole colonists, and free blacks. The recruits came from all over Louisiana, and were patriots to the core, sworn to protect their colony from the British. Quickly, Galvez marched his army into position, 
ready to spring at the enemy force. One Louisiana native who witnessed the march memor memorialized it in poetry. March in good order, with sturdy certain step, scorning the danger, almost frying at the enemy. Behind them, you can see marching in the open, our fierce settlers, the intrepid militia. Using speed and surprise, Galvez's forces launched their attacks. In less than one month, they captured three British forts, 28 officers, and 550 soldiers. They had swept the British from the southern part of the Mississippi River. Page 12. Galvez's battles were far from over them. Before he could win West Florida for Spain, he had to conquer two more British strongholds on the Gulf of Mexico. Mobile's Fort Charlotte proved easiest to defeat. Spanish cannons battered the fort so hard that it surrendered after just one day. When he heard about this crushing victory, King Carlos made Galvez commander of all Spanish military operations in North and South America. Page 13. Galvez's next target was Pensacola, the British capital of West Florida. Mounting an attack against this port city would be difficult. Galvez would have to approach Pensacola by sea. Dangerous weather and treacherous sandbars often troubled ships along that stretch of the coast. Indeed, a hurricane scattered Galvez's fleet on his first try at Pensacola. In February 1781, Galvez tried again. This time, his fleet made it to Pensacola, but not without trouble. One of his ships became stuck on a sandbar outside Pensacola's bay. The crew freed the vessel, but a frightened admiral, fearing British cannons that commanded Pensacola's harbor, advised Galvez not to attack. Page 14. But Galvez didn't listen. He moved ahead on his own and challenged others to follow. Yo solo, I alone, he shouted as he sailed his ship, its big cannons booming, into the bay. As cannonballs screamed overhead, Galvez and his officers stood calmly on the ship's deck. One shot from a British cannon tore through the rigging of Galvez's ship. Otherwise, his ship and his men passed unharmed. Galvez's bravery inspired the captains of the other ships to follow him into the bay. As they sailed through, they faced constant British firepower. Still, Galvez returned to sail among them and cheer them on. Page 15. The Battle of Pensacola lasted six weeks. Finally, on May 8th, a Spanish shell hit the British gunpowder supply. This direct hit touched off an enormous explosion that killed about 100 soldiers. The British raised a white flag of surrender, and the fighting ended. The siege of Pensacola has been called a decisive factor in the outcome of the revolution and one of the most brilliantly executed battles of the war. West Florida now belonged to the Spanish. British troops there were no longer a threat. After seven long years, British military might began to weaken. In October, they surrendered to Patriot troops at Yorktown. The Revolutionary War was over at last, thanks in part to the gallant Bernardo de Galvez. Page 16. Bernardo de Galvez's role in the American victory was not forgotten. In 1783, the U.S. Congress praised him as an early and zealous friend of the U.S. On November 30, 1786, Galvez, just 40 years old, died of a sudden illness. But he was immortalized in both words and stone. The city of Galveston, Texas, was named in his honor. A statue in Washington, D.C. depicts him on horseback. The inscription beneath it reads, May the statue of Bernardo de Galvez serve as a reminder that Spain offered the blood of her soldiers for the cause of American independence. The end.